pictures can be so deceiving. They show you a brilliant, happy home, but never the skeletons in the walls. Let's dig some art today. This is a story, but only because I wish it wasn't a reality. It is no antagonist, no protagonist, just people who are unaware of the wake of their actions. It's a story about two little kids and their beautiful, happy family. They love their mother, they love their father, and have everything they could ask for. What they don't have is the one thing nobody asks for. Proper communication. I don't know how old this story is, but I know it has many variants. So many that it changes from home to home. From a very young age, there was one thing the two kids had always been a witness of. Mistakes. Small, big, fat, or fatal, no matter what kind, every time a mistake was made, they witnessed a set pattern of events. And what they recollect the most out of those is noise. Loud noise. They were too young to understand it at that time, so they just simply sat in some corner only to discover that no corner was devoid of what seemed like grunge metal then. They grew up a little to realize that the grunge metal was in fact shouting. They realized that mistakes lead to accusations, rebukes, fights, and then shouting. Now sitting in the corner, the two finally gave in and started to actually listen. What they heard took them on a silent roller coaster of feelings, emotions, and learning. What kind, you ask? Well, for one, anger. It was disturbing in every which way. Two, irritation. Annoyance, because the sounds seemed to reach everywhere. Three, fear, because apparently no mistake was ever small. Four, desperation, because feelings were never to be expressed. The two would try and express these onto each other and on pillows, but doing that just led to more scolding and more fights. When pillows didn't suffice, the girl took up karate. But more than MMA moves, words hurt her. Words can be very, very, very powerful. They can save you, enrage you, motivate you, even alienate you, but when not entirely heard, they just decimate you. For instance, once the family had an exchange student over, she was very keen on watching an episode of Sherlock, so the children put it on and started to watch it. Unfortunately, she received a phone call which lasted for almost the entirety of the show. With about three minutes left for it to end, she came back and asked the children to change the channel as she did not wish to watch anymore. They said, just one moment, and then they change it. But she would not stand it. She complained to the children's parents saying that they wouldn't listen to her and the two who called downstairs for a talk. You see, the kids had just committed a mistake. They urged their parents to understand that just one more moment and the show would have ended. But in anger, one of the parents blurted out something that scarred the little girl for a very long time to come. What is our fault here? She said. The answer? Your fault is that you are my child and she isn't. I cannot possibly make her understand this. A perfectly apt response. The exchange student was a guest, and so she had to be given more liberty. But the little girl didn't understand this. She just heard the first part of the sentence. And in doing so, she was wrong, as she would come to realize it much later. There, a classic case of misunderstanding. That day, something changed inside the two of them. They acknowledged their anger and started to invest more in defense mechanisms. 
The girl now took up Taekwondo. The boy buried himself into textbooks. Millions of small fights which they overheard bit by bit made them think, was it us? Are we the reason? What have we done now? Then some years later, their teenage minds entered the messy wreck of emotion stage. Needless to say, everything got worse. The latent hatred accumulated from all those years of shouting now started getting reflected in their speech. Add their rude behavior to the stress of work and family and finance and what you get is some proper attitude adjustment. And then one fine day, the boy went a bit too far. He raised his voice, answered back and stormed away. He had done it. His voice was now smeared with hatred for everyone. His scars open for all to see. The battle that took place that day had a different effect on both kids. The brother convinced himself that showing his emotions only hurt all those around him and doing so would make him more of a disappointment. He became a social recluse, putting on this brilliant facade, hiding the turmoil brewing behind. The teenage girl, on the other hand, she couldn't stand it. She was saddened to see her brother shut himself away from everyone. She became more outspoken. But at the same time, she blamed herself for every single fight. She now started with Jeet Kundo. You know, if you tell someone something for long enough, they start believing in it, no matter how bizarre it is. Every passing day, they started slacking with their homework, became lazier, and developed marvelous temper problems. The fights, the ego display, the anger ate away at them slowly until one day, the sister reached her ultimatum. At a family baby shower, she left the expecting couple a note saying, please, don't have a fight in front of your child. Don't let her feel as if she is a disappointment that causes you to fight. You know, I know some scars disappear eventually. Trust me, I would. I'm a dermatologist's daughter after all. But they leave memories behind. The kind that are very hard to forget. And the boy and girl, they never did. They just feared the creation of new ones. And this shall always perhaps hold them back from being confident about their own selves in some way or the other. Because the hate you give little infants, <laughs> Not that one. Because the hate you give each other makes children think that they are disappointments. So love, laugh, thrive, smile, be happy. And one day, you might just find yourself saying, and they lived happily ever after. The end.